Hello, welcome again to the paper Food Biotechnology under the module Fermentation of Fish and Meat. In this module, you will be introduced the method of preserving fish and meat so as to retain their color, flavor and texture and also to extend the shelf life of the product. One of the well established preservation method is fermentation which involving the use of beneficial microorganisms. These organisms mainly of lactic acid group produce lactic acid which lowers the pH thereby preventing the growth of other food spoiling bacteria. Thus this module will introduce to the method and significance of fermenting the fish and meat. After completing the module you should be able to number one understand the method of fermentation of fish for long term preservation, comprehend the type and nutritive value of fermented fish products, know the method of fermentation of meat and its products. Fish is an important source of protein in the daily diet. This is mainly in coastal areas. However, fish has the disadvantage that it spoils quickly. If the fish is not boiled, salted, dried, smoked or preserved in some other way, it will quickly spoil. Fermentation fish paste and sauce have a much more important place in the daily diet rather than salted or dry fish. So fermentation has got a very important role in uh, making the fish, uh, fish preserved for a very long time. Although fermented foods are a good source of protein, they can be consumed only in limited quantities. Why? Because of the high salt content of these products. Fermentation of fish is especially used in situation where drying of the fish is not possible because either the climate is too wet or where the cooling and sterilization of the product is too expensive you cannot, you cannot afford to do that. Preservation of fish by fermentation technology has been popular from time immemorial from older times. Fermentation fish paste and sauce are released as a condiment nothing but it has it is having a flavored salt along with cooked rice in many of the southeast asian countries now we can see during the fermentation of fish the protein in fish is broken down in the presence of a high salt concentration the fish protein is mainly broken down by enzymes which come from the fish itself these enzymes where are they present they are mainly present in the gut of the fish if you take the traditional fermentation methods you can see in fish the intestines are removed from the fish fermentation will be often slower there as there are fewer enzymes present in the flesh so now you can come to understand that more amount of enzymes are present in the intestine that is needed for fermentation of fish now let us look at the types of fermented fish products number one the product in which the fish retain substantially their original form are preserved as large chunks number two products in which fish are reduced to a paste number three products in which fish are reduced to a liquid traditional fish products fermented are basically salt fermented products depending upon the proportion of salt added the products can also be calcified into high salt or low salt in high salt you have more than 20 percent of total weight salt whereas in low salt you have only six to eight percent of total salt and no and no salt products also it is available the dominant flavor grieving components of fermented fish products are proteins and their hydrolytic cleavage products such as peptides peptones amino acids higher acids and their esters glycerides and the derivatives monosodium glutamate nucleotides and inosine monophosphate. Now let us look into a very important topic. What is the nutritional value of fermented fish products? If you take the fermented fish sauces and paste, they generally contain amino acids and polypeptides equivalent to about 10% of protein. Amino acids which occur in such foods without much change in composition and quality with fish and hence contribute towards nutrition just like fish protein. These fermented fish sauce and paste they are also a good sources of calcium, 
iron and some B group vitamins. You all know that calcium is required for your bones of your body and iron you know that it should be required for your hemoglobin which is taking oxygen in your body through blood. However, the nutritive importance of these products is limited by high salt content which restricts its bulk consumption. Now let us look into the role of microorganisms in fermentation. These microorganisms probably play no role in breaking down the protein during fermentation. But what is the role? You should be really wondering. However, microorganisms which can tolerate salt do seem to contribute to the specific taste and smell of fermented product. In some fermentation technique, a fermentable source of carbohydrates such as boiled rice is added to fermented fish product. This combination stimulates the growth of lactic acid bacteria. So, as you all know, we learned from the uh, previous module that lactic acid bacteria is the one which break down lactose into lactic acid. This we have le learned from fermentation of milk products. You should be doing right now here. Due to the formation of lactic acid which is desirable in these products, the pH of the fish mixture is lowered making the product safer and easier to keep. So, more acidic your product are, it, you, the shelf life of the product increases. Now, let us say, see a most important parameter, what is the role of salt in fermentation of fish? If you take the main role of salt in fermentation of fish is to draw liquid, liquid out of fish and to control fermentation. That is the main role of salt. Addition of high salt content prevents the spoilage due to the bacteria as a result the number of bacteria present drops as quickly as possible during fermentation. So, when you are drawing more amount of liquid out of as a result of salt that contamination or that uh, spoilage is also being prevented by salt. However, on the other hand high salt concentration also slow down the fermentation speed. So, we came to know here is salt has got both advantage and disadvantages both bone and bane of using in fermentation food products. Now, let us look into the traditional fermentation methods used for fermenting fish. Here what is being done here is the fermentation process is allowed to take place by chance and is based on experience alone. So, you should have more amount of experience or skill to take up the fermentation of fish that is very much needed. Further, there is no control measure applied over fermentation. As in most traditional method influx of air is restricted, air entry should not take into the fermentation because air may carry many microorganisms that may lead to the spoilage for fermentation fish. And salt roughly about one third of the weight of a fish is usually added for fermentation to occur spontaneously. Here again it stresses the fact that you should not add too much of salt to the fermented fish that is also a great disadvantage. The method in which the process is done it varies according to the region. So, experience alone uh, determines the outcome of fermentation such as if the product has a different color or smell so that it is different from normal it should not be eaten. So, you should not be lured uh, by taking anything colorful so you should take it with care. Traditional fish products can be divided into two groups. Number one, again, the products which in the presence of salt are fermented by the enzyme present in the fish, flesh and intestine. Number two, the products which are fermented in the presence of boiled or roasted rice. These two things have already been discussed earlier. So, it is not nothing new to you. Now, there are three kinds of fermented fish products. Number one, the fish flesh is converted into fermented fish products. Number two, the fish is converted into a paste. Number three, the fish whole or in pieces retain as much as possible of its own structure. We know that fermented fish products are an important protein supplement. They contain a number of essential amino acids. I told in my previous module the uh, meaning of essential amino acid which cannot be synthesized in our body and which needs to be supplied in our diet. So, essential amino acids to be added to our diet comes from also from fish. And this essential amino acid which come form an important addition to the daily diet. For example, fish sauce as you know it contains a lot of amino acid lysine it which is one of the essential amino acid to be sublated in the diet. This amino acid particularly it is found in very small quantities in rice. 
the quantity of the resultant product depends on the fat content of the fish the enzymic activity in the fish flesh contamination in the salt used and the temperature contaminated salt can, uh, can be recognized by slightly pink color so it is an indication of salt which is being contaminated so you should be very careful when you are using salt for fermentation of milk and it can be purified by heating the salt or metal sheet over a fire now let us see what are the different fishes used for fermentation many kinds of small fish are used in fermentation like salt fish fresh water fish shell fish and crustaceans you will see a table what are the different types of fishes used so that you can get an idea about the fermentation of fish the fishes particularly used now let us look at the next topic how to produce fish sauce as fermented product first the fish are washed and left intact then they are packed with large quantities of salt in earthen ware it is a type of ware or it is a type of uh, container cooking ware and wood containers usually what is the rate of salt which is added usually 1 kg of salt is used for 3 to 4 kg of fish the containers are filled to the rim so that no air is present and sealed as to create an anaerobic environment the fish protein which is seen in fish is broken down as a result of activity of enzyme present in the intestine of the fish after several months a clear amber color liquid will have been formed which is then separated from the residue by squeezing it out sometimes a fish sauce can also be made during preparation of fish paste fermentation of fish sauce takes longer than that of fish paste because all the flesh must be broken down to create a clear liquid now let us look into what is a fish paste and whole fish you know that a considerable part of protein consumption in a number of asian countries emerges from the consumption of fish paste because it is of great importance from a nutritional point of view than fish sauces so fish paste has is nutritionally very good rather than fish sauce what are the kinds of fish paste used in south asia they are number 1 fish salt mixtures products which are fermented in the presence of cooked or roasted rice on which yeast and molds are present the general method of preparation of fish paste is the same as that what we described for fish sauce the only fermentation time is shorter not as at all all of the fish flesh needs to be broken down fish paste must be mixed regularly to keep the salt evenly distributed as a supplement to fish sauce and fish paste the entire fish can also be fermented in southeast asia the intestines and gills are removed from the market after which the fish are washed in drinking water this is the production uh, protocol for making the fermentation of whole fish the fish are mixed with salt as usual 1 kg of salt for every 3 kg of fish and they are again put into jars dried food pulp or tamarind you know the tamarind we don't want to talk much about tamarind in south india or even in india it is a well known commodity which we are using for many cooking purposes it is added to the salt and fix uh, fish to lower the ph the fish are kept covered with brine with the help of weighted mats and are fermented for about 2 to 4 months they are then transferred to wooden barrels and carried taken to keep them covered with brine fermented fish can be kept for 1 year this is the shelf life of fermented fish now let us go to the next topic of our module which is the fermentation of meat having done about the module on fermentation of fish you should be very much thorough with we are going to talk about fish fermentation of meat you should be aware that meat is the most valuable livestock product but because why meat is composed of protein amino acids minerals fats and fatty acids vitamins and other bioactive compounds and small quantities of carbohydrates from a nutritional point of view meat's importance is derived from its high quality protein containing all essential amino acid especially and it is highly bioavailable minerals and vitamins so when you compare to fish meat is more nutritionally more uh, weight 
because it contains high amount of essential amino acid rather than fish. When we see about the meat fermentation, it is a low energy preservation method which results in unique and distinctive properties in meat such as it brings about flavor and palatability that is the taste, color, microbiological safety, tenderness and host of other desirable properties of this specialized meat. A raw meat is often converted to a fermented meat or fermented product by incubation of cultured or wild microorganism which lower the pH. Cultured means we are culturing the organism in our defined uh, culture condition in our laboratory. Wild means which is uh, taken from a particular source. This organism lower the pH, once lower the pH this is mainly account for the lactic acid. And lactic acid we all know we are doing from the previous module, it accounts for the antimicrobial properties of fermented meat. Now you can see a figure about the meat fermentation of meat in your slide. This originates from the natural conversion of glycogen reserves in the meat because as you all know that the, liver, the glucose which is taken into our body when it is not in immediate use it is usually stored in glycogen as liver for later use. So whenever you are uh, going for any starvation or you, whenever you are uh, fasted for very longer time those glycogen in your liver it will be broken down into glucose which then supplies your energy. And this conversion of glycogen reserves in the meat and added sugar during product fermentation. The acidification of the finished product upon addition of lactic acid and addition of salt which also lowers water activity on drying is the cruise or it is the main uh, motto of fermentation. Both natural and controlled fermentation involves lactic acid. Most starter culture used today we know should consist of lactic acid bacteria that is the main bacteria everywhere you can see for fermentation because this is a bacteria which is growing under anaerobic condition. It needs an anaerobic environment for its growth and its activity and microcacci selected for their metabolic activity which often improves flavor development. The reduction of pH and lower of water activity are microbial hurdles in producing a safe product. Fermented sausages often have a long storage life due to added salt, nitrate, nitrate, low pH due to lactic acid production by lactic acid bacteria organism in early stages of storage and later drying which reduces the water activity. Now let us look at some of the definition or the guidelines which was proposed in US American Meat Institute 1982 for making fermented dry or semi dry sausages. It includes a definition for dry and semi dry sausages. The dry sausages include chopped or grounded meat products that due to bacterial action reaches a pH of 5.3 or less. The drying removes 20 to 50 percent of the moisture resulting in a moisture to protein ratio that is MP shortly abbreviated of no greater than 2.3 to 1 in ratio. Semi dry sausages are similar except that they have a 15 to 20 percent loss, loss of moisture during processing. Semi dry sausages also have a softer texture and different flavor profile than dry sausages. However, because of the higher moisture content, semi dry sausages are more susceptible to spoilages and are usually fermented to a lower pH to produce a very tangy flavor, which is a very bad flavor. Now, let us look into a new term what is a fermented sausages? Fermented sausages are defined as a mixture of ground lean meat and minced that is uh, the, which is cut fat, curing salts, sugar and spices which are embedded into a casing and subjected to a fermentation drying. Casing is a type of box used for fermenting your meat. Quality of fermented sausages is closely related to the ripening process that gives color, flavor, aroma and firmness to the product. So more the fermented meat product is ripened you give, get more color, flavor and aroma which is very good to the product. And how this is developed? This is developed by a combination of or complex interaction of chemical and physical reaction associated with fermentative action of microbiological flora present in the sausage. The incubation of sausage at the optimum growth temperature for the growth of lactic acid bacteria 
coupled with reduced oxygen causes exponential or logarithmic growth of lactic acid bacteria which causes the simple sugars into lactic acid and lowering of pH. So you all know about from the microbial growth curve that any organism should have four, four uh, grow phases. One is a lag phase where the microorganism has to adapt to the new environment where it grows and the log phase or exponential phase where their will, growth will be in a very uh, faster rate and very uniform or very uh, speed rate and uh, stationary phase where they have neutral, utilized the nutrients more from the medium and start to accumulate toxic products, uh, toxic waste products and the death phase where totally the nutrients are being de depleted and uh, more accumulation of toxic waste products leading to the death of the microorganism. The fermentative uh, route is glycolysis as I told you earlier in the previous module for the homo fermentative lactic bacteria. For homo fermentative bacteria is nothing but they give rise to a, a single product which is seen in all the organism. This produces a sharp tangy taste. In general, higher the temperature up to the optimum growth temperature, shorter the fermentation. Rapid fermentation results in many products such as sulfites, ketones, methyl branched acids while slow fermentation results in methyl branched alcohols, aldehydes and esters. Now let us look into what are the different starter cultures for fermented meat products. The same thing we have again uh, we have seen in our previous module when we are do doing about the fermentation of milk and milk products. The starter cultures are those defined as the preparation containing live microorganism capable of developing desirable metabolic activity in meat. The other beneficial character is they are used to increase the microbiological safety to maintain stability by inhibiting the growth of undesirable microorganism and to improve the sensory characteristics of fermented sausages. Starter cultures are formed by mixing different types of microorganism where each one has specific function. Lactic bacteria are used in order to generate controlled and intensive acidication which inhibits the growth of undesirable or any food spoiling microorganism and provides increased safety and stability to the product. You can see here a table which shows the microorganism species most commonly used as starter culture to fermented meat products. Among the starter culture, the first rank goes to lactic acid bacteria, lactobacillus brevis, lactobacillus planetarum, lactobacillus fermentarum and pediococcus pentosacus. It has been characterized as probiotics. I told about probiotics and prebiotics in my previous module. Strains of lactobacillus psyche and pseudomonas acidolacti have also been proposed as potential probiotic in meat products. The probiotic culture can also be selected from the lactic acid bacteria group in fermented meat products. Facultative or obligate anaerobes. Facultative means they can either grow, they either need or not need, they are not, uh, it is not hard and fast route, they can either grow in aerobic or grow in anaerobic. Whereas obligate means they are strictly, they don't require aerobic or don't, uh, not, uh, or anaerobic. Here facultative and obligate anaerobes mainly which does not require oxygen belong to gram positive uh, bacteria where mainly uh, lactic acid such as genera lactobacillus, streptococcus, pediococcus, leuconostoc, lactococcus and enterococcus are used which can metabolize several saccharides or sugars into lactic acid, alcohols, aliphatic compounds, lipids and some amino acids. These organisms perform two functions in fermentation sausages. Number one, reducing nitrate and nitrate into nitric oxide and when combined with myoglobin is responsible for cured color and by anaerobic glycolysis to produce lactic acid and glucose which reduces pH. Nitric oxide as you all know we should know that it is one of the reactive nitrogen species which forms free radicals in your body and these free radicals can be neutralized by antioxidants in your diet. The sterile tissues of animals on slaughtering, on cutting the animals become contaminated by spoilage and pathogenic gram nitric bacteria such as E. coli, Salmonella species, Pseudomonas species, Clostridium perifringens and also gram positive species. As a measure of preservation of meat, its water activity denoted by AW 
it is reduced by adding salt or curing by addition of nitrate or drying. Acid fermentation of meat is carried out to enhance stability, texture, color and flavor of the product by choosing appropriate starter culture. In the manufacture of fermented products, meat products, starter culture mainly of Pediococcus cerevisiae, Lactobacillus planetarum and Micrococcus used. The majority of fermented products may be classified either into dry sausages with a moisture content of 25 to 45 percent water activity and a semi dry sausages with a moisture content of 50 percent whereas the water activity is approximately 0.95. Meat curing compounds and starter cultures are mixed and stuffed in casings at low temperature of about minus 5 degrees centigrade and incubated at a temperature between 20 to 40 degrees centigrade for fermentation. The fermented product is then dried at 10 to 20 degrees centigrade. Examples of fermented meat sausages include pepperoni and salami while bologna and summer sausages are semi dry sausages. These names are mainly, these sausages are mainly used in uh, Japan or China or other uh, Mongolian countries. So, we are getting a name, a different name, a very new name which I haven't heard of before. So, uh, fermented poultry sausages include dry as well as semi dry turkey sausages. These fermented sausages are more popular in Mongolian and Japan countries, not very much in India and other western countries. To conclude with this module, you should have learned or you should be thorough that the method of preserving fish and meat by fermentation. As you know, the procedure involves the use of probiotic microorganism mainly lactic acid bacteria group which aims to lower the pH in the product by producing lactic acid as the end product in their metabolism. This helps to enhance flavor and texture in the processed foods and extend the shelf life of the fruit. I hope the listener or you, you will be very much benefited by these two modules and we hope to look at further modules in our subsequent session. Thank you very much.